Hey guys, Brian from Wrenches and Rides, and we have a 2020 Tesla Model S Performance here, but we're gonna talk about something that's going to pertain to all electric vehicles in their charging. We're gonna look at the difference between level one charging and level two charging, and if you're new to electric vehicles, we might give you some options of getting level two charging in your garage without spending a lot of money or having to rewire a bunch of things. So, stick with us. While I can't say it's true for all electric vehicles, Tesla does come with a home charger and a pigtail that allows you to use it with 110, 15 amps. That gets you about four miles per hour of charge. It's very slow and in the winter time, if it has to heat up the battery or anything, you're getting zero miles per hour charge. So this is a viable option for some. As you use your car more, you're gonna to want to upgrade and have a secondary cable. So you can keep one in the car because if you're traveling and you need it, it's best that you didn't say, oh crap, I left that in the garage. So my thoughts in this is to add a couple more outlets here. Now, if you're in your garage and you have a single outlet that's a 20 amp 110, there's three wires that go to it. You have your hot, a common, and a ground. Very simple. Get an electrician to look at this before you do anything. If you wanted to change your breakers up here, you could change that plug to a 20 amp 220, which is gonna give you hot, a hot, and a ground. That is going to give you 16 amps of charging in a level two status, so 220, and that's gonna about give you three times the amount of charging. So I'm gonna get 11 to 12 miles per hour of a charge. Now that's a big difference compared to four miles per hour, because if I'm doing 40, 50 miles a day and I charge the car overnight, I can easily make that up plus, right? Now, if you want to move up more, there are also larger outlets. This is a 50 amp outlet here, and that will get you, a, you know, upwards of 40 miles per hour if you wanted to go that route. For me, charging, I wanna have all my options here, but at the same point in time, I believe that this 20 amp 220 is going to give me perfect amount of charging, so I'm not charging super fast. It's good for the car, but I'm able to make up everything that I want to in a day. So let me show you what I picked up as a secondary charger for this car. This is the Bose RV J1772 standard EV charger. Now this is a different end than what Tesla puts on their cars, but they give you an adapter so you can easily go back and forth. This fits many of the other EVs that are out there, so you wouldn't need that adapter. It is a 16 amp 220 charger, so you can see we have the 20 amp plug here. It does have a very simple interface and a 25 foot cord. Now, for traveling or for home, it also has an adapter that you can plug in to make this a 15 amp 110 charger. So it would bring it down to a level one charger. In doing so, obviously you're only using the hot and the ground because you get it. Check out some more or read some more on wiring. With that said, let's plug this in and look at what it does as far as charging inside the Tesla. So if we look at our charging rates, we have actually jumped up to a 16 by 16 amp, and we're currently at eight miles per hour. Because this is just charging, it will probably creep up and move around to get you somewhere near the 11 miles per hour. To get to my about 60% charge that I have set up for daily driving, it says 15 hours. Um, It'll change its charge rate here and there. But this gives me a viable option for 220 and I'm actually getting 16 amps out of it, which is great. While this charger is connected to your vehicle, it does tell you what's happening here. And if you did have any faults or poor wiring, it would be blinking 
down here in the fault box. So you know that it is connected and it is charging and does have the proper power to the box. Closing the doors and turning the heater off made a huge difference. You can still see I'm at 235 volts, 16 by 16 amps, level two, 11 miles per hour. That's been bouncing between 11 and 10. Uh, dropped the charge time down drastically by nine hours and 20 minutes to get to the, about the 60% charge. That's a big deal because if I were to plug in 110, which we will hear soon, uh, it will make a real big difference. So the difference is for you Tesla owners is you can either wave this in front or push a button and this will open up. You can plug that guy right in. It will accept itself here. I'm on 110 here. You can see 122 volts, zero by 12 amps, and it should slowly move up to about four miles per hour. And that's where I'll sit. 22 hours and 45 minutes remaining at this level of charging to get to the same place. And one of the items that's obviously gonna be missed when you go to a non-Tesla charger is you can't just push a button and remove it. Let's take the charger we got from Bose RV user included 110 adapter and plug this into 110 and see what we get for charging rates on our vehicle. Using my phone, I am able to open the charge port, plug this in, take a look at what's happening here. This is a 20 amp receptacle, so it's gonna make me wonder if this is going to charge at the same 16 amps at 120 or if it's gonna drop down. Oh, it looks like it's going up to 16 amps. So I'm getting five miles per hour using the adapter cable. Now let's try the stop charging in the unlock here. I've had no real good luck with this. Yeah. It's interesting because it still shows the green lights that it's mating and it goes back to charging. So either way, uh, it's something that I found it's easier just to unlock from the inside of the car. So we went over some of the nuances that you might find using this charger with a Tesla. Now, if you have a standard J1772 plug on your car, you won't find any of these nuances out there. This will be just like the factory charger that you'd have for your car. This is a $184 charger. So if you wanna use it at home to bring yourself up to level two, if you wanna keep it in the car, keep the extra cable, so you have the option of going up to a 16 amp level two, or using the plug in a 110 situation, you have that there. For the money, it's well worth keeping that safety net in the trunk and maybe keeping your standard charger at home. No matter how you look at it, I think this is well worth the money invested, especially if you do have a Tesla because some of those adapters are pretty good money. And the fact that you'd have to take it out of your garage and put it in the trunk every time you left just doesn't leave me that warm and fuzzy feeling of just get in and drive the car and enjoy it. We're gonna do a ton more with this car, including a lot of track times. This is a very fast car with a zero to 60 around 2.3 seconds with its latest update. This is gonna be a blast to go through and take to the track. We just need to wait for some warmer weather. So please subscribe to this channel. Give us a like in this video. If you have the opportunity to share it with anyone else we might help, we would appreciate that also. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a great day.